Hello and welcome to another episode of me painting again. Oh yeah, here we are again. And this time I decided to push the boat out a little. <laughs> and I'm not talking about having a haircut. <laughs> that did go a little wrong. But anywho, we won't talk about how I cut my own hair short, shorter, shorter, and then a bit shorter. <laughs> Started off with a trim and then, uh, you know, had to get a bit shorter. But let's have a look at the more important things, um, the paints. <laughs> so we've got some titanium white, some red, vermilion hue. It's a hue. <laughs> you want to know what a hue is. It's not the color that it says in the, in the tube. Yeah, I know all about paints these days. Cadmium yellow hue <laughs> and uh, yellow ochre some uh, van dyke brown which is also not van dyke brown it's uh, burnt umber and ivory black mixed together hmm. <laughs> and then uh, prussian blue and what i've done is i've made myself a little bit of a grayish color using the brown and blue and white and uh and that's where we shall start this one, on a black canvas. A black canvas, and let's go. So using the old two inch brush as always, tapping into uh, the paint, get an even distribution of color. And we start in this light area. <laughs> well, this is gonna be a light area anyway. You can see on the left, you can see my picture. Now, I always create my designs. Oh, I've got the hiccups. I shouldn't have had that chocolate. <laughs> you know what it's like, though, over Christmas? You get given loads of chocolates and stuff, and you can't stop eating them. <laughs> um, yeah, so we're creating the uh, light, the horizon light, and um, that picture I created on Photoshop. I don't always do my designs on Photoshop. I know... Uh, some of you are interested in how I do my designs. Um, sometimes I use a piece of paper and a pencil. Sometimes I use black card, pencil crayons. Sometimes I use Photoshop. And sometimes I don't do any design. I just do a painting and see what happens and hope for the best. <laughs> so that's our uh, light spot in the sky. And like I said, it was just uh, some, it was a little bit of red, a little bit of blue, a little bit of brown and white all mixed together to make that. <laughs> so I'm just knocking off the excess paint using a piece of paper. Um, it's a easy way of cleaning your brush without creating too much mess. I tend to use both sides of the paper, fold it up into a half and then use it again. Fold it into a quarter and use it again. So that's uh, crimson, uh, Prussian blue, and a bit of black on that one. And now I'm just putting this dark colour all the way along here to make it a bit darker. I can't quite remember if I put a little bit of um, liquid clear on the canvas to start with. I think I did. But you could do it with or without. Um, the, the only reason sometimes I like the liquid clear. Uh, I don't think I did actually. <laughs> it looks very dry, that bottom half. I think it's just a dry canvas. Yeah. You can either use liquid clear or not. <laughs> Oops. Not tight enough. Sometimes you've got to uh, put your whole body weight on that <laughs> to tighten it. To stop it from moving. And that's what I do. <laughs> so yeah, you can do black canvases with or without any uh, medium on there. Um, it's up to you. 
I don't always use medium, sometimes I just put the paint straight on. Yeah, so I thought I'd do a castle. I'd do a, a bit of a funny looking castle. I just made it up and uh, thought it'd be a fun one to do. Um, it's not something I've done before. It's not something you see that often on YouTube. So I thought it'd be different. So I'm using just a little bit of a lighter color there just to add a bit of uh, something different to the sky. I'm actually using a uh, a sky that I've seen. Uh, I took a picture of. I'm always always taking pictures of skies at the moment. It's become my new obsession. <laughs> I'm out at the shops looking at the sky. Ooh, it's got a nice red glow. Take a photo. Um, there's a one inch brush. And when I'm in the woods, oh, there's a nice little sunshine. I'll take a picture of that. I end up with tons and tons of pictures on my phone of different skies or different lighting. The way this tree was lit up one day. So yeah, it was amazing. So using some <laughs> vermilion red, which isn't vermilion, it's a hue, and some cad yellow, which isn't cad yellow, it's also a hue. <laughs> I'm uh, putting in this light area. Yeah, I've been studying paints recently, paint manufacturer, paint manufacturing, because I'm going to start my own paints. Um, so I've been mixing my own colours, because I don't like using hues anymore. <laughs> I wanted like some solid, some solid colours, use some real pigments and some oil, and that's it. And, that, and then I know what's in my paint rather than a lot of the paints that you get, they chuck all sorts of stuff in. But that's for another video. <laughs> so I'm using uh, my one inch brush and just putting in the warm area at the bottom part of the cloud. So it's really warm where the, the sun is just blasting these clouds red. And I think it's amazing when that happens, I do. <laughs> the, today, when I was out, the, the sky went kind of a crim like a, a lizard crimson-y. Like, it was really interesting. I took a quick picture. <laughs> There'll be an episode with that sky in at some point. There was one morning on the way to work, the sky was actually green. It was actually green and I was like I can't believe it the sky is green amazing it's only at a certain time it's, it does that another thing that I always think is amazing is the moon it has like brown around it well my eyes say that anyway <laughs> whether it is it's when the clouds are out the moonlight lights up the clouds so i'm just softening this where the red and the light color mix with the two inch brush just softening it all tapping it moving it just softening it all up So I'm eyeballing my picture and then I have a quick think. <laughs> what can I do next? So I'm getting the, uh, the fan brush, number three fan, get some of the yellow and the vermilion on my brush and some white. Another little thing. <laughs> Since we've been talking about paint, titanium white is always mixed with a little bit of zinc white. Who'd have known, eh? Have a look on your tubes and you'll see the pigment names. They put a little bit of zinc white in there. And the reason they do that is uh, because apparently <laughs> titanium white tends to yellow a little bit if it's not in, in the sun. If there's no light getting to it, it yellows a bit. So they put the zinc white in to combat that. <laughs> but the zinc white isn't 
isn't as good as titanium white for the film quality. Because when uh, oil paint oxidizes, it creates a, uh, a film and that protects your painting really. I know you varnish it and everything, but the uh, strong film that you get on the paint is what um, makes the paint last a long time. Like these, in the museums and stuff, it's a, it's how it's lasted. And apparently the zinc isn't as good. It's not as strong, but they put it in the paint anyway. Interesting. <laughs> Yeah, it's what apparently it's what they used to teach to uh, artists how to make paints and all the uh, technical things. I don't think they told them about the dodgy lead and paint and the mercury and all that other stuff. <laughs> they didn't know about that. Anyway, <laughs> I keep going on painting, making paint subjects. It is interesting though. So I'm putting a little bit of a uh, bit more colour. And then I always soften it, put in a bit of colour, soften it, put in a bit of uh, the colour and then soften it. And then eventually I just put in the colour and you don't need to soften it anymore. But this is just a way of building it up. Fluffing it. Making areas disappear that you didn't really want. And then some areas you, know, you want to keep and you want to create a bit of movement in the sky. I'm just getting a bit more, more paint on the fan brush. So if you're wondering how big this canvas is that I'm using, I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> it's either a 20 by 16 canvas or an 18 by 14. Can't quite remember. So I, I make making my own canvases at the moment I'm using the, uh, the frames from previous canvases that I've used I rip the frame the canvas off the frame and put new canvas on and uh, so I've got all sorts of sizes I kept a lot of my old paintings you see and then I can reuse the canvas because as you uh, get better me personally, I'm not bothering to keep my older work. I just get rid of it, start some new ones. <laughs> and it's a bit cheaper that way. <laughs> you can keep painting then. And that's the whole uh, process for me. I like to keep painting, keep learning. So I'm just tapping away there just to soften some of those areas. That sky is on fire, isn't it? <laughs> it really is bright. So now there's some of those dark clouds in front of that light area. Remember, whenever you want something to stand out, you want it to be like these clouds, they wouldn't stand out if it was dark. <laughs> so you make it a bit lighter, so then you can put in a little bit of dark. then just fluff them a little bit <laughs> I'm really just uh, blending them away a little bit setting them into the sky really I don't put too much pressure on when I'm doing that I'm quite light see again you can create another layer of clouds a bit of depth in the sky bringing some dark down there And soften it. You can really make some amazing skies, making lots of layers like that. Putting a little bit of dark and a little bit of light and dark and light, and you can have a sky going for miles. <laughs> so I'm just lighting, putting the light on the underside of these little clouds. Just a little bit here and there. It's where the light would catch. 
and then I start freestyling <laughs> other areas I like. I think all oh, that would look good with a bit of bit of red. And then just quick a light nice light soft movement, just letting that blend together a little bit. And I noticed that was disappearing there, so I thought, hmm, I think I'll go back to dark there. So you gotta make these decisions, you gotta think think on your feet a little bit. You've gotta think, hmm, does that can you still see it? Is that disappearing? Because if you want it to be seen, you've got to make sure it's seen. <laughs> And you've, you've just got to make those decisions, crunch time decisions. If someone's not quite working, think about how you can fix it. Tappy, tappy, tap. It's the best way to load these brushes, you know, just a big old tap, 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 tap. Remember <laughs> what I said in another episode. Think about you're the tap dancer, <laughs> but the brush is your tap dancing shoes. So you tap away. <laughs> so I'm just scrubbing in some colour for the uh, the water, some crimson and crimson and the brown there. Mm, forgot I had dark sienna on my palette as well. Crimson and brown. There's a little bit of blue in that colour as well. Just thinking about the colour of the water. See, one of the main mistakes we make as artists when we're uh, painting out of our head we always think the water should be blue. <laughs> and I don't know why that is, but we do. I was looking at some old paintings that I ripped off the cat, <laughs> ripped apart earlier. And uh, I was like, whoa, I did this really nice looking landscape. It did look pretty good actually. The mountain was good. I liked the trees, the sky was good. And it all looked really good apart from the water. I mean, it was nighttime. <laughs> it was at the mountain. I mean, like I said, the mountain looked fine. Everything looked fine. The trees looked good. But the water was this blue, and it looked so out of place. And I remember when I painted it, thinking, oh, there's something wrong. But I didn't know what, so I'd kind of just left it in the end. And uh, <laughs> a few years later... What was wrong was I did the the water blue. <laughs> but it seems to be a, a, an automatic thing, I don't know. Might be just me. <laughs> I didn't go to art school or anything, so I just like to just go through the paintings and make mistakes on the way and then you learn by mistakes that's the, that's the way I've learned anyway that's why I'm still learning the more mistakes you make the better you get and, and that's a good thing so get some blue and crimson on the knife get a little bit of this black and brown just pull it out flat A little bit of white just to and see what kind of a grey we've got going. A little bit more crimson, a bit warmer colour. Pull it out, 
flat and have a look at it. What colour have we got? <laughs> Cut across a little roll of paint. And what we're going to do is we're going to start on this castle idea. So we're going to make it up the way <laughs> the way it's going to happen. It's going to happen. So because we've got the little roll of paint, we can just press down and sort of spread it out a little bit to make our shape. And one of the turrets, if that's what you call them. <laughs> I think it is. So what, what we're considering while doing this is the outer shape of it. It's really all about that at this point. So if we've got our dark area, we can highlight it and everything. But we want to create a shape. It's our shape design. We want the audience, <laughs> the person that looks at this painting, to see shapes to them create some kind of castle type thing. That's what I thought anyway. This technique you could use to do anything with a bit of practice with the knife. You could be painting some amazing looking buildings and castles, houses, anything. Anything that you want to make, you could make it. Just a bit of practice. You could do better than this one. <laughs> this, this is just showing you how to do it, but you could do it better you could spend a bit of time thinking about what kind of castle you want maybe sketch it out on a piece of paper before and look at reference and what 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 artists mean when they say oh i looked at some reference just means they've been out and looked at things and or painted on location some stuff or or they've uh got photos that's all references I know for us total beginners we don't know what they mean when they say oh I'm just getting some ref I was like what we're not playing football here <laughs> we don't need a ref oh reference all right <laughs> So I'm using, using that dark colour, thinking shape, making some areas bigger, some areas smaller, and kind of working it out as I go along, really. Thinking about, do I have a walkway from one to, to another? Do I have, how old is this building? <laughs> Getting that straight line, that straight edge is important. I'm not too worried about the bottom part. I'm more worried about the areas around it. Sort of a little bit of a building type thing there. In my head, <laughs> in my head, this was quite an old place. Maybe it was one of the first stone castles. <laughs> Who knows? I was just having fun, just making the shapes. Maybe that was an area that the uh, the owner of the castle came out and looked across the sea. And over here, maybe that's the entrance to this selection of buildings.
So when you're doing something like this, have a bit of fun with it. Enjoy yourself. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. Enjoying myself. Just creating my design. Just put a bit of dark there. Thinking about the grassy areas below it. So I've got another uh, painting idea of a castle. Castle at sunset. I did a... Uh, a sketch of it and put it on Instagram and a lot of people liked it and uh, it's different to this one it's a bit more uh, of a stronger sunset and I'm gonna be doing that one as well it's probably more of a sunrise actually I'm gonna do that and there's a person in it <laughs> so it's a bit of a challenge but it's, it's gonna be a fun one to do I mean, I'm looking forward to painting it so I'm Getting some dark on my brush. I decided to do the tops of the turrets using a brush because I, I thought my knife skills are just not good enough yet. <laughs> so I just thought I'll put little tops on, little triangles really. Thinking about where I am, would I see the it as a triangle? And then I've got to think, well... The triangle on top, yes, but then I would probably be looking under the roof part. So I had to think about that when I'm painting it. I'm always trying to think about those sort of things in my head, about my position to what I'm looking at and how it would affect the object or person. Unfortunately, the light is shining and reflecting on the paint there. But this was the best angle. The other angle was a bit awkward. <laughs> I'm just pulling the paint down there. Well, there we have a quite an interesting shape. You could do all sorts. You could put little chimneys on, and you could you could do all kinds of stuff. You could really go for the detail, though. You could make like a castle wall and all, and, and all sorts. I've got some ideas actually. <laughs> so I've got got chucked some of the uh, red and yellow in into my mixture and some white to make a light mixture. So this is going to be our highlight colour for our castle. So don't forget, pull your knife flat and then very lightly we can go around this. I'm using a detail knife because this is a bit tricky. <laughs> some areas, it, if it doesn't stick, you might need to scrape some of the paint off or be a bit persevere a little bit. It's a little bit better, isn't it? We can see it a bit better anyway. Just pulling that. I'm kind of thinking the light is probably coming from right to left, but I'm not 100% sure. <laughs> so I'm just just tugging that paint around it and just very lightly pulling down but you could do a lighthouse using this technique make an old lighthouse, you could paint some light in it I'm still considering putting some of the some light in some in this castle <laughs> I haven't done that yet but I've considered it a few times this this painting has actually survived the butcher's knife <laughs> and when I, when I say the butcher's knife I mean uh, uh, my Stanley knife 
Because if I don't like a painting after it's dry, <laughs> I go on the attack and I can use the canvas again. But I like this one. There's something about it I like. So just very lightly, this is a bit of a different colour, a bit more crimson in it for the roofs. So you don't want it all the same colour, it gets a bit boring. And I have changed it to the uh, picture. Originally I had dark blue roofs. But, you know, things change when you're painting. And I like, I like to go with it, go with whatever happens. I'm just trying to work out these rooftops. <laughs> I've got a little brush. Didn't feel like I could do the knife bit on the roofs. Something I did think about while I was doing the roof I thought, hmm, maybe one of these is really old and the roof has broken off. <laughs> I thought about that afterwards. I was like, hmm, it's an interesting idea. That's something I could do. I could get rid of some of the tiles and then just paint in some like black where the tiles had broken. I could still do that. That's something else I've considered. So I'm just working things out, adding a bit of more colour to the uh, the rooftops. I put quite a lot of paint on that brush, really loaded it and then use little light sort of flicks to pull the paint off. I think I could have used a bit more. and just clean up the bottom part with a bit of dark. I mean, you could really go into some detail on these buildings if you wanted. You could go for it. <laughs> you could do this part, what I'm doing now, and then let it dry and then come in with the small brushes and you could paint in every brick, <laughs> every stone. You could really go for it if you wanted. See, I, I went for a little bit lighter at the front there and left it a little bit darker behind, just so that stands out. I kind of like the way it looks at the moment. It does change slightly though. Just adding a bit more colour there. I've been uh, drawing a lot of houses and buildings recently. Something I want to improve on. <laughs> so I've gone dark now. Bit of dark in there. And I thought, hmm, maybe that building should connect. It was all one, so I thought I'd put the roof in there. And I've gone lighter again. <laughs> it does look better all connected though, I do admit. Just scraping off that that base, just so I can see it a bit better, see how it is, see what it looks like. And using uh, a little bit of black on the brush, just dotting a few windows. I've gone for windows, you know, wherever I like.
could put them more in. You could put um, tiny little windows in. You could put like those little slits in where you'd usually get a bowman. Maybe there's a door, another window. Another one, and another one, and a door there. Just getting some blue, blue on my brush, and brown, blue and brown. So that's Prussian blue, a bit of burnt, um, well it's found out brown, sorry, and some yellow ochre. Just making a dark greenish, just tapping it in, just tapping. Tappy tap tap tap. And then thinking about the land that goes down there. Just tap that in. Tapping in the dark. Tapping in the dark. We just tap in dark there, just so I can put some light on afterwards. I don't know about you, but I'm watching this and wishing I put a light on in that building. <laughs> I wish I got a bit of cad yellow on a little brush and just went blip and put a light on somewhere. Maybe when you do yours, you can do do something like that. Maybe when I do my next one, I can do one where the light's on. <laughs> I could still put the light on on this one. I could, I could add it. Anyway, we've put in some nice dark area. You could even add a bit of light around the building as well like a rim light in areas yeah, there's all sorts of things you could do that kind of looks like the building has been left it's like people have left it and gone <laughs> I, I, I noticed that bit was a bit dark so I thought I'll use the fan brush just to spot a bit of light on there light on the underside of the that roof now the water just using that same light color that I did the sky with that light bluey browny ready <laughs> color <laughs> using it in the water it's using little rocking strokes creating the water and we can think about like rocks got rocks in our water so we need to put some rocks in using the one inch brush to get some grass <laughs> I'm just pushing up it's a bit of cad yellow yellow ochre in our dark color I just want to uh, lighten some of these areas I'm thinking about the way the land goes the way you tap in your lights I'm 
create the indication of uh, shape. Just tap. When you tap in it, just a lot of the color will disappear, but some of it will stay and you can create your shape like that. And you'll get dark areas that you can save. I used to have a tendency of getting rid of everything. <laughs> I used to uh, really enjoy doing this bit and there'll be no dark left <laughs> and it'd be too bright everywhere as well it'd be like someone's uh, put floodlights on everything <laughs> but you know, it's part of learning so I did a bit of red here and there now because I want it all to marry up I want the, the red in the sky to also be in the grass A nice bit of a splash there. Bit of a splash. And the wave is hitting stuff. Hitting rocks. Grabbing some uh, Van Dyke Brown. Putting in this rock here. And just pulling the rock in a bit further into the land. So we've got some rock and stone in the land and in amongst the grass. And then here we have another another rock which gets hit. So we've got to create the splash behind the rock where the water's hitting. And then we can put the rock in afterwards. <laughs> when you when you work it out in that way, it does make it a bit easier for you to paint. As you think on the other side of the rock will be the splash so we just put the splash in and then put the rock in after see and it works Because it would be a lot harder to put the splash in after you painted the rock. <laughs> That's why you do it in that order. You already knew that. <laughs> but I've got to uh, say stuff like that to try and make out I'm, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> but it's all a bit of a fluke. So I'm getting a bit of a... Uh, A colour, a bit of rock colour in with my mix, and I'm just putting in a background rock there. Use my finger to soften it. There's another angle. <laughs> there you go. A little bit of red in it. <laughs> really making a meal of that background rock. <laughs> You have to try not to do too much of the background. If you want it to stay far away, you don't want too much detail, but <laughs> it's easy to get carried away. So I'm just throwing a bit of yellow ochre in the uh, color and use that as my highlight. I say highlight, I'm keeping this quite dark really. Just a little bit of uh, bit of colour in there, just to lighten it a little bit. It's a bit, a little bit of the blue in that. 
Just give it a bit of a wetter look, that does. And then bring that water up to it. Quite like that rock. I've actually seen a rock like that when I was in uh, a place called Scarborough. When I was uh, out painting there. I was painting this rock just like that, actually. Just like that. And this bloke came over and he goes, it's all right if I look at your picture. <laughs> I goes, yeah, sure. And uh, he had a look. And uh, his jaw went, because mm. uh, it was one of those paintings that actually worked. <laughs> and he was, his, his jaw was on the floor. He goes, oh, I wish I could paint. I just don't have the talent. And, uh, and I says, oh, I don't think there is such a thing as painting talent. It's just something you learn. Because um, I haven't either. And, uh, and he says, uh, oh, I've always thought you had to have a family member that could paint. And then because they can paint, you can paint. <laughs> and I don't believe in that at all. I don't, I don't. I just think if you want to do it, if that's what you want to do, and you put the time and effort in, and you're going to get better. That's all I think on that subject. I don't believe you have to be related to uh, Michelangelo or Van Gogh. <laughs> I just think if you can spend, if, you, if you've got the, the guts... <laughs> <laughs> to spend a bit of time doing some awful paintings for a while <laughs> then uh, you'll suddenly start doing some good paintings you're still going to do bad ones but you know that's just the way it is but you'll do some bad ones that you think are bad and other people think are amazing so but that's just another one of those things about being a painter. You always want to be doing something better. Always want to do something awesome. And that's good because it adds fire to your belly and makes you want to paint more and more and do better and challenge yourself. So I'm grabbing some more of the yellows. Start putting in some uh, more grassy bits over here. Just falling down there some on the rock there some nice grassy areas on or mossy type areas there <laughs> whatever you want <laughs> whatever works but yeah it looks quite good quite like the movement going on down there there's a lot of movement down here and then the, that castle is very straight and still. It does look lifeless though, doesn't it? Maybe it is a really old castle. Maybe it's abandoned and it's been abandoned for years. And this is the first time anyone's seen it. <laughs> A long time ago, <laughs> there was a castle in the middle of the ocean, on the side of a cliff. Yeah, that bit of red there it just makes that. I like those little dots of red. They do really make it a little bit better because it brings a bit of unity to it. Mm, my hair looks different. <laughs> There's a lot of it in that. A big mop of messy hair. That's what I usually have. So a little bit of red on the liner. Adding little bits of detail here, little bits of detail on that. 
on that roof. So I have this idea if I line it a little bit, it's going to bring that roof out a bit. Now some of that paint doesn't even come off. <laughs> That's something you could do afterwards really when it's dry. You could get a little bit of linseed oil in your paint mixture and you can add all the little details. I just grabbed a blob of paint now and I thought I want some flags. <laughs> Put some flags up there. You see it still looks lifeless even though there's flags there. And uh, I subconsciously wanted life in that castle. And I, the flags just kind of brought a little bit, but it still, to me, looks abandoned. And what I should have done is put the light on. <laughs> and then there could have been a, a beautiful princess in there waiting for a handsome prince. Yes. A beautiful princess waiting in the castle. And then a handsome prince comes and rescues her from a dragon yeah yeah and I could be the handsome warrior prince rescuing the princess from the dragon <laughs> so I'm adding a bit of light onto the roof there I just wanted to separate her from the that rooftop and that turret behind it And I added a bit of red because <laughs> it was a bit too white. And then I thought, oh, that looks quite good now. That makes those rooftops look pretty good. So I added a bit more. And I thought, oh, mm, I'll put a few tiles on there as well. Just trying to lighten those a little bit. Now I'm sitting back having a look. <laughs> Always sit back, have a look, see what you think. Make a decision and get in there. <laughs> under the, uh, the roof see I'm starting to fiddle a bit <laughs> on this painting at some point you've got to sit back and go you know that that's it that's finished I'm happy <laughs> but I always sit back have a look see something else do a bit more and then uh, Keep going and going and going, and there's nothing wrong with that. You should do that if you're. Uh, it might be part of the fun, isn't it? Sitting back, having a look, creating something more, making things a little bit better. I could see all the other stuff I'd like to paint now. Little bits of uh, like water along the rock, little splashes and stuff I'd like to add. There's all sorts I'd like to do. <laughs> but yeah, I think we're nearly at the end of this one. I decided uh, a few little birds maybe in the background. In that light. They're coming in. They look quite big though. <laughs> Birds. 
dragons. <laughs> And there's a little JB, for good measure. <laughs> anyway. Oh, there we go. Here I am with that liner. Can't get enough of it, you see. Can't get enough. Always got to do a little bit more. I was like, ooh, I could add some little, little wiggles here and there. That does make it a bit better, actually. It did need it there. And these little bits of detail, it does make it a bit better. But anyway, there we go. That's the uh, finished painting for now. Um, hope you enjoyed this one. It's a bit different to what I've done before. It um, gives you an idea anyway. <laughs> and you can do something better. Um, so yeah, thanks very much for watching this episode. And... I'll see you at another one. Cheers. Bye.